Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Direct Connect base plate kit here on our 2021 Ram 1500. So a base plate kit is just going to be one of the several things that we're going to need to successfully flat tow our Ram here. So in addition to that, we're going to need our tow bar. We're going to need a supplemental braking system that's required in most states. We're also going to need safety cables. And then last but not least, we need some sort of lighting system. So a base plate kit is going to be what physically attaches our tow bar to the vehicle. So this is what our particular base plate kit looks like. And right away we can see it has a very hidden design. Once we get all this stuff off here, you're going to see that most everything is actually tucked away back behind the bumper, which is one of the reasons that I really like this particular kit here. Now everything we can see has a nice black powder coated finish, which is going to help protect all the metal from rust and corrosion over time, being that we are going to be banging other metal objects into that, our tow bar arms, our safety cables, and it is on the front of the vehicle. So it's important to have a well protected metal there so it can last. So this is what everything looks like hooked up and we've arrived at the campground, ready to head in town, grab a bite to eat. It's very easy to unhook. We're going to start by undoing the clip on the side here, pulling up, pulling this pin out, and then our tow bar arm should drop free. Now keep in mind, if you can't pull that pin out, you will need to release the tension from your tow bar arms, which is going to vary depending on which tow bar you have, but most all of them have a little lever here that you can break the tension free. But moving on, we can go ahead and remove our safety chains. And then we can remove our electrical connector. And then you'd obviously undo your breakaway and everything else. But as we can see here, we actually have a removable arm design as well. Therefore, we just simply pull that pin and we can actually rotate out in either direction. In theory, you can on this particular vehicle. It actually binds on that plastic on the bottom. So yours may be a little bit different, but ours, we just have to go up and over. It's pretty simple, only that one way, but not an issue at all. But once we take that out, if we take a closer look here, you can kind of see, again, everything is nice and hidden behind the scenes here. The only things that really stick out are the parts that we kind of need to be. The safety chain convenience leak, that obviously has to stick out a little bit from the bumper because when we go to hook up our safety cables each time, we don't want to be banging it into the bumper of our vehicle, scratching the paint. So it's important that this does stick out a little bit. And then our electrical connector here, again, we don't wanna be hitting the painted bumper there, scratching the surface each time we need to make our hookups. But aside from that, everything has a pretty sleek installation. If you really wanted to, this is actually not part of the base plate kit. This is just part of the safety chains that we are using. But you can see now everything's nice and sleek look, recessed behind the bumper. And overall, you wouldn't really even be able to notice with just driving down the road. If somebody's seen your truck, it's not like they're gonna know what all this stuff is. It is hidden back there pretty far, so. Pretty concealed look there, definitely a factory-like finish. So when we have arrived back at the campground, we're ready to take off, we're done with our trip. It's very easy to hook back up. We're gonna insert our tow bar arm here. Normally you could lock it in either position, but again, this particular vehicle, that plastic kind of binds there. So we do only have one position, which is totally fine. Go ahead and line up our tow bar arm here. Stick our pin back through. Line up the pin and clip on the other side. Close that down. And now obviously we'd have our electrical connector to plug back in, our safety cables, uh, breakaway system, whatever you have for your particular setup there. But in regards to the actual base plates, it's pretty much just a tow bar arm connection. So in regards to compatibility, this base plate kit here is gonna be specifically designed for motorhome, Roadmaster motorhome mounted tow bars. However, it can be used with other tow bars from other manufacturers such as Blue Ox, Demco, and such, but you will need an adapter for this, which is sold separately. So depending on what tow bar you have, you may or may not need an adapter. If it's a Roadmaster motorhome mounted one, and what I mean by motorhome mounted is that it stores on the motorhome when we're not using it. It basically just folds up like so. So that's actually what's uh, classified as a motorhome mounted tow bar. So as long as you have a Roadmaster motorhome mounted tow bar, you're good to go. So in regards to installation, I can honestly say this is the easiest base plate kit I have ever installed. Now, normally trucks in general are kind of easier, but this particular one, it kind of blew my mind. I got about halfway through it and I was kind of waiting for us to take the bumper off because that's usually standard practice. But for this particular one, you don't have to do this. We also really don't have to do any drilling into the vehicle whatsoever. We do have to cut a bracket on each side. 
But aside from that, this is one of the seamless installations I've ever done. Uh, it all goes together very nicely. This is something that you guys can definitely do at home by yourselves. And being that it is a truck and it sits up a little bit off the ground, you guys don't need a lift or anything. If you have some ramps you can drive it up on, great, it's gonna give you more room to work, but it's not required. You guys can probably get this done with just common hand tools. You will need a torque wrench, but if you don't have one, you can just rent one from a local auto parts stores. But just, this is so simple, guys. This is definitely something you're not gonna wanna pay a shop to do. You can do this at home in your driveway by yourself. We'll walk you through this entire process step by step now. Give yourselves around three to four hours depending on your experience level. So to start off, we need to come underneath the vehicle here and we need to determine whether or not our truck has the active air dam. So this is what the active air dam mechanism looks like. We have a motor here. There's gonna be the actual flap down here. So if yours doesn't look like this, you can just proceed to the next step. But if you do have this motor here, along with this little plastic flap, we do need to remove this. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a pry panel tool. We're gonna be removing one of the wire clips there, attached to that bracket, just like so. So now next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna loosen the two nuts that hold the motor to the studs there coming off the frame. So we're gonna use a 13 millimeter socket. We're gonna reach up in there and get those out now. So here's what the nuts look like. Now we should be able to pry the motor off the studs just like so. So once we have the motor loose from those two studs there, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be removing the connector from the motor. So it's gonna be here. We're just gonna pry back that lock just like that. Now we should be able to depress it and pull out. All right, so once we got that done, we're gonna jump to the other side there. We're gonna have those same two nuts there. And once we remove those, this entire assembly will come off the vehicle. So once we have the air dam out, we need to determine if our particular truck has factory tow hooks or not. So our particular model does have the factory tow hooks. This is what they look like from underneath the vehicle. So if we do have the factory tow hooks, they do have to come out. So we're gonna need two different socket sizes in order to get the tow hooks out. We're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket to remove this bolt here. And we're gonna need a 13 16 socket to remove that bolt there. Now I actually had a little bit of trouble getting my socket on that bolt head there. So I just had to tap it on there, which is why you can kind of see it's suspended on there now. But nonetheless, we need to remove both of those bolts to remove the tow hook. So those bolts are both on there pretty tight. I do suspect there's some Loctite on there as well as there is with most tow hooks. So I'm gonna switch over to a half inch breaker bar and I should be able to get it the rest of the way out with our 3 h socket, or 3 h ratchet rather. So this bolt isn't gonna drop all the way out yet. There is gonna be a star washer sort of holding it in on the top there. So we're just gonna let it hang for now. We're gonna go ahead and remove that other bolt. Then we should be able to pull the tow hook down there to free that star washer. So that's what that bolt there looks like. And now our tow hook is free for the exception of this last bolt here that's holding it down. So I think I'm gonna get a pry bar and just pry that down there and that bolt should then come out. So I was having a little bit of trouble prying it. So what I did is I just took a hammer there. I just slowly beat that down. 
until the rest of it comes out. And as you can see here, it is a very long bolt. But we'll go ahead and remove that completely, and then we can remove the tow hook. So now that we have the tow hook out of the way, we should be able to see behind here one of our bumper beam studs. So we're gonna be removing this nut here, which attaches the stud from the bumper beam to the frame on the vehicle. So again, you're probably gonna need a breaker bar there just because those bolts are fairly tight. But once we get them loosened, we should be able to switch over to our ratchet or an impact if you have one. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna follow this wiring harness here that was just directly below that nut we removed. And we need to remove a couple of these clips from the bumper. So we're gonna be removing this one down here, then this one to the side. So we're just gonna take a trim panel tool. It's kind of hard to see, but just as best as we can, just try to pry that clip from the bumper. There's that one. We have one on this side as well. And there we go. Now we're just gonna push this forward as much as we can. So next we need to turn our attention to this brace here. So what we need to do is we're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket and we're gonna remove that bolt on the bottom there. And we're actually gonna be trimming a part of this brace off just directly below that bolt on top. So now I'm gonna take a paint marker just to give you guys a little bit of a better guide on the material we're gonna be removing. But basically as much as we can without cutting into that piece of metal behind there. So we're just gonna take either a Sawzall or if you have a tiny reciprocating saw, you probably can't fit a full size Sawzall in there or ideally a uh, die grinder, whatever you really have just to remove that little metal flap there, part of that bracket without damaging the metal underneath there. <laughs> So here's that bracket that we removed there. We were having a little bit of trouble with our particular die grinder just because it was just a little bit too big to get the correct angle on it. So I went ahead and switched over to a Sawzall. It's a little bit lower profile than most, so I was able to get in there. But really, whatever you have to cut it, even a hacksaw will work. Just take your time. Make sure you don't damage anything else on the vehicle. And this is about how much material we need to remove. So next, we're gonna take our driver's side base plate assembly. Now the driver's side is gonna have the two prongs here for our electrical connector. And then we're gonna take one of the nuts that we removed earlier. It's gonna be the nut that we removed from here, attaching the bumper beam stud to the frame. So now we're just gonna take the base plate assembly and we're gonna set it into position and we're gonna secure it to that stud there with our nut. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pipe spacer that comes in your kit here. This is what it looks like. We're gonna be sliding this on top of the base plate between the frame using the forwardmost hole. So it should be fairly obvious because the rearwardmost one already has a pipe spacer welded to the bottom of the frame. So you just wanna do as best you can to line it up at the center of that hole. Then we're gonna take an M14 hex bolt. They're gonna be the larger ones that come in your kit. You only have two of them along with a split lock washer we're gonna place on some red Loctite, and then we're going to thread that bolt into the frame there through the pipe spacer. You may need to sort of position the base plate a little bit to get it to start threading. We're just gonna give it a couple of turns to hold it in place. And then we're gonna come back with our factory bolt here, this one. We used an 18 millimeter socket on this earlier. If you remember, it's that really long one that we had to pull out. So we're gonna reinstall this one along with some more red Loctite. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna secure these top two holes on our base plate to the bumper bracket. So in order to do that, we're gonna be taking our half inch bolts 
along with our half inch fender washers. So these are the larger washers that come in your kit. We compare it to just a standard half inch washer. You can see this one has a much larger diameter. But we're gonna take one of these, we're gonna apply some red Loctite, and then we're gonna insert that through the hole there. We're just gonna do the top one since it's easier to see, but it should pass through the hole in the flange there for the bumper beam. And then on the back side, you're not gonna be able to see this, so we're just gonna explain this the best we can. But on the back side of that bolt, you're first gonna place on one of our half inch flat washers, a half inch split lock washer, and then finish that up with a hex nut. So I can't really see what's going on either, so I'm just doing this all by feel. We're just gonna loosely install it at this time, but I've got that one on there and I'm just gonna repeat that same thing here on this bottom one as well. So once we get the top two in, we should have one more hole left and the bottom it already kind of lines up with that hole coming from the bumper. But this is the factory bolt that we used and just as an extra precaution, we're gonna apply some red Loctite. It looks like I'm gonna have to shift this base plate a little bit to get it over there to line it up. We'll just go ahead and loosely install that one as well for now. So now we're ready to tighten and torque all of our hardware to the specifications in your instructions. We're gonna be starting with these two bolts here. You're gonna need a three quarter inch socket and wrench to tighten these down. You can kind of reach behind this little bumper framework here to get access to the nuts on the other side. So if you're doing this by yourself and you don't have someone to help you hold that wrench, you can actually trap it against the base plate there so it holds in place. It just makes it a little bit harder to get the wrench off when you're done. Then next we're gonna switch over to a seven eighth inch socket. We're gonna tighten down this bolt here. And now we have another one here on the side that's a little bit hidden. So we'll come back with an 18 millimeter socket. We'll switch over to our torque wrench and we'll torque that one down as well. So now that we have everything tightened and torque over here on the driver's side, we're just gonna repeat those same few steps over on the passenger side as well. So now that we have both sides of our base plate on, don't forget to reinstall your air dam in the reverse order that you removed it previously. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Roadmaster Direct Connect base plate kit here on our 2021 Ram 1500.